Welcome to this intro to Vectors for Game Creators. This is a collaboration with Big Dev. I'm going to give you a quick intro to Vectors, a brief overview of their power, because they solve a lot of geometric problems beautifully. Then you should head to Big Dev's channel for a super cool example. It will show you how to use simple vector operations to code steering behaviors in the Godot game engine. These make characters move in a smooth, realistic fashion. We're going to talk about two things, how vectors work in math and in games, because it's a bit different. The biggest difference is that on the computer, vectors are just a set of values and you can store whatever you want in them, including colors to give you an example. But let's talk about vectors in math. A vector is a quantity. That's a mathematical term for a number or in that case, a measure. It measures a straight path between two points. It has two properties that's very important. The magnitude, first of all, that's the vector's length. And then it has a direction. The direction is not an angle. Interestingly, when we study vectors in France, we have three properties instead of two. We use two different words for the direction. You have the direction, that's kind of the angle of the line the vector is following. And then you have the way, for instance, if you want to go from Paris to London, it's not the same as if you want to go from London to Paris. Vectors compress the information of the distance and the way in which you are going in a single mathematical element. So you've seen we represent vectors with an arrow starting at one precise point and pointing towards another one. But for calculations, we actually represent them as a set of coordinates. On a plane in 2D, vectors have two coordinates, an X and a Y coordinate. Just like points, the difference is that it does represent a distance and a direction. For example, we have the AB vector. To go from A to B, you have to move three units on the X axis, minus two units on the Y axis, and that's how it is in 2D games where most of the time the y-axis is pointing down. In that case, the AB vector would have coordinates of 3 and minus 2. Here's another example with the CD vector. To go from C to D, you have to move one unit to the right on the x-axis and three units down on the y-axis. So it has coordinates of 1 and 3. You can calculate those coordinates. If the vector is going from point A to point B, you will subtract the coordinates of A to the coordinates of B. To get the AB vector, we subtract the X of A to the X of B, and then the Y of A to the Y of B. If the vector is going from B to A, that's the other way around. You subtract the coordinates of point B to the coordinates of point A. Godot, like many other engines, calculates that for you, so you don't have to bother too much about it. Now you can add vectors together. If you take two vectors A and B, the addition of those gives you a vector that starts at the start of A and ends at the end of B. This also works with three or more vectors. It's exactly the same. You get a straight line from the start of the first to the end of the last. When you want to calculate the resulting coordinates, you just take the coordinates of the individual vectors and you add them together. The X with the X, the Y with the Y. If you have three or more dimensions, you add these as well separately. For example, if we take the vectors at the top, a has coordinates of 3 and minus 2, B has 4 and 3 as its coordinates. When you add them, you add the X of both vectors, so that's 3 plus 4, and then you add the Y of both vectors separately, that's minus 2 plus 3. This would give you a vector of length 7 on the X axis and 1 on the Y axis. You can easily calculate the opposite of a vector. That's a vector of the same length, but going in the other direction. For that, you just multiply its coordinates by minus one, or in Godot, you would multiply the vector directly by minus one. If vector A represents a vector pointing from the player to the enemy, the opposite vector represents one that goes from the enemy to the player. Instead of adding vectors together, we can subtract them. 
Subtracting a vector to another is like adding its opposite. For example, see the b vector that's pointing down. Minus b, the opposite, when you subtract it, goes in the other direction. So if you subtract b to a, you get a vector pointing up, not pointing further down. And on the right side, you can see how it's similar to adding two vectors together, but instead of adding the coordinates, we just subtract them. In 2D games, vectors are used in different ways. They go a bit beyond the mathematical applications. As I explained at the start of the video, on the computer, vectors are just sets of values. They can represent two, three, four coordinates. We use them to represent motion. For example, if you have a character on every frame that has some thrust because it's jumping, the player is pressing the right arrow, so the character will have a force pushing him up and to the right. Then you have some gravity. In order to get the player's motion on every frame, you will add the thrust and the gravity, giving you the final velocity vector. We also use vectors to store positions. In math, a point and a vector are two completely different objects. But these have something in common. They are represented by two coordinates, even though they don't have the same properties. On the computer, you use a vector type to store one, two, three, four values at once. Because of that, it's perfect for positions as well as vectors in general. You can also see a position as a distance in a certain direction from a, an object's parent or the origin of the world. On top of that, we also use them for normals. They are vectors with a length of one that are perpendicular to a surface and point away from it. You can use normals to know the degree of the slope you're walking on. You can use it to know if there's a wall to your right or to your left. Although for that, we tend to use rays, which are also vectors. We also use normals for lighting in 3D. We use them extensively with shaders. So they have plenty of applications. And we'll end this introduction with these few examples. But don't worry, vectors are so useful. We'll cover them again and again on the channel. You've already seen some with the previous tutorials about game creation, but there'll be more. There are a few more operations we can do with vectors, but these I'd rather show you in practice, not in theory. If you want to learn more about vector fundamentals, I've left some links in the description below. Please tell me if you find this video format useful. Don't forget to leave a like if you want to see more tutorials. And that said, be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one.